Welcome back everyone to my Let's Play of Ogre Battle, March of the Black Queen. Orpheus is about to get some frequent flyer miles. He has to fly all the way back across the map to head to the Shulamano Garrison. So, like I said, if you're basically going by order of like uh, levels for bosses, you'd probably want to maybe go through the Ryan C first. The boss there is one level lower than the boss here. But we're going to take care of this southern route first, and then we'll head to the Ryan C. Actually, one thing you could do is, you can actually save one of these uh, ways into the uh, Empire for uh, after you uh, defeat the city of Zandu, which is basically the capital of the Empire. Uh, because when you go to that map, because you're uh, basically in the heart of the Empire, every uh, city that you liberate, you'll actually lose reputation for that's why when I uh, redid the uh, revisit to uh, Antalgial uh, with my uh, save that was at the end of the game, uh, my reputation wasn't full. So you could potentially save one of these routes uh, for after you do the uh, City of Xandu, which is the stage that's going to open up after we defeat this level. So you can build up back up your reputation. But I, uh, I did not do that, of course. I just kind of... Uh, went and did uh, the southern route, then did the northern route, and then did uh, finished up the game. So, so uh, Fort uh, uh, Shulamana here, we were told, is the uh, big uh, gap, the biggest garrison on the continent. So, yeah, expect uh, a lot of enemies uh, coming up uh, in this area. We have uh, 29 uh, enemy units. Uh, and uh, 14, uh, 14 of them are flying. We have 8 high sky and uh, 6 low sky. So we saw one of the high flying uh, pass by us there a little earlier. Now we get our first neutral encounter here. The neutral encounters in this area are uh, Salamand, Salamans, uh, which is the highest red dragon. Uh, level 23, we get them in the mountains. We can get uh, phantoms that are level 25 in the swampy type regions and we can get krakens level 23 uh in the sea so we got um, a paradin sword there we also got an ice blade a little earlier uh that ice blade plus seven strength obviously an ice weapon and uh the paradin there we just uh saw the stats on that it is a uh, ice weapon as well, plus 11 strength. So, two ice weapons are. Uh... So. Here we have a nice one. The enemies are high flying units. There are uh, 29 enemy units all told. So, got a lot of fighting to do here. So, over some pretty rough terrain. We got mountains, sea. So. But we'll see how we do here. You might be a little under leveled because we didn't do the um, Ryan C, but eh, it's okay. We'll uh, we'll make do. We'll make do for uh, levels with uh, superior tactics and techniques. So they've seen Orpheus uh, through these uh, through the day so far. So all right. Uh, in terms of uh, levels. Uh, characters uh, in here are basically uh, levels 20 to uh, about 22. We have a few undeads that are uh, level 23, and the boss, uh, Purveya, uh, one of the remaining four devas, is uh, level 25. And he's kind of the, uh, he is the most evil of the, the, the devas. So kind of like how you can have four uh, starting opinion uh, leaders, uh, he would be like the uh, the most evil one, the uh, the phantom opinion leader, and the one on the other side, the uh, uh, general Luvalon, he'd be like what Orpheus is. He's the uh, ice cloud one. He's the the the, uh, the nicest one. So. And and then your uh, your high uh, your high neutral uh, the uh, Inakia Lord that would kind of be Debonair, and then uh, Figaro uh, Debonair's friend he would be like the the Thunder Lord the uh, low uh, neutral so 
But yeah, so they have uh, kind of like how we have the four potential uh, leaders. They have the four uh, devas. And like I said uh, in a previous episode, they're all kind of named after uh, cars. So, Mohawk? Oh, we cleared up some of the uh, enemies there. We're going to keep our water unit kind of around here. Uh, there's going to be uh, some of the high flying units are going to kind of uh, going to kind of go up the uh, the coast there. And then a bunch of the other units are going to come straight up the middle over these mountains. So we've got another high flying unit here coming up. And we see there's that other uh, flying unit over there coming up on the coast. So you want to spread your uh, you want to make your uh, line of defense spread it from the uh, the coast to basically the middle of the mountains, so. Hopefully we can get that uh, cherubim there that was just turned to stone. Turn that into uh, a seraphim, turn her into a, a seraphim. And then we uh, would only have to worry about the dragons becoming uh, promoted. Oh, and our, our devil, I don't think we can promote our devil yet. Or our demon to a devil yet. Seraphim, we need level 22, Charisma 60+, plus, Alignment 80+. plus. So, the Devil, 20+, plus, a little less levels, 50+, plus uh, Charisma, and Alignment between 0 and 25. Mm -hmm. That temple there, that's going to be obviously where we're going to heal up a little bit. Orpheus has been flying around here just uh, gathering some uh, some treasures. He'll go over there and liberate that other city so we can get some uh, extra funds. It's already nighttime here. Mm -mm, we got a undead unit coming up there. It'll be low sky because the phantoms can carry the, the mage. Yeah, our Halloween is uh, getting some uses here. We haven't seen him in a while. And our little Cerebus as well. We won't get to see any of the other Halloween because he just got turned into a, a rock. Halloweens, these have pretty good resistances, so feel free to use them in the front row if you need to. Uh, they can take a few. They can take a hit, even though you think it's a pumpkin head. He'd be kind of squishy. He's just wearing clothes and he has a head that's a pumpkin. You figure he wouldn't be all that tough, but they have some good, like I said, resistances, and they can take a hit. So, and their front and back row. Uh, are both the same, so they function uh, equally well in both uh, rows. Well, this is not good, though, going after our leader. What is good, though, is we took out all of them there, so. And, but unfortunately, we missed. But if we didn't miss, we would have finished them off. Doe! But I'm glad we got missed that second time, because that allowed our monk to do some healing. All right, everybody leveled up, because yeah, those uh, uh, phantoms there are the highest levels, level 23. Like I said earlier, most of the uh, other characters are level 20, 21, with some of the leaders being 22. So, nice mountain unit. Red Dragon 2 in the back, you can kind of tell the... Uh, the Salaman is a little more orange. Uh, see, the Red Dragon is mainly... The Red Dragon 2, I should say, is mainly red with just a hint of orange on, like, its, like, uh, hands and tips of its wings. The Salaman, uh, if you go back and watch when we recruited the Neutral Encounter, uh, he's more orange. So as he becomes a, a better Red Dragon, he becomes more orangey. Pumpkinhead's doing did some good damage there, taking out uh, half of the hit points of the uh, red dragon. Yeah, Pumpkinhead's are really, really good when you're uh, fighting dragons. We have our own little dragon there, our own red dragon hanging out there. Uh -uh. Yeah, we see the, like I said, the, as I said earlier, we have a bunch of uh, folks coming up the, uh, the, uh, the shoreline there the western shore so and thankfully the uh, eagle men that I mean the raven men are being dumb and they are uh, targeting our uh, wraith 
uh, undead. So yeah, won't take any damage because he's only uh, vulnerable to white magic and they use their fire attacks. So that'll give a good opportunity for our uh, monk if these uh, keep if uh, we keep fighting this unit with uh, this unit. Give our monk a good chance to uh, heal up our uh, doll master there, who is taking quite a bit of a hurting uh, from that phantom mage unit. Yeah, those those that unit was smart. Their phantoms uh, targeted the leader. Well, looks like that Raven Man unit is a little scared. He's gonna sneak off to the um, over toward the temple. Her other units are probably wants to recruit. Uh, we recruit uh, his uh, his uh, rates there. Priestess card, free healing, always good. You never know when, especially if you don't have a unit that has a monk in it. Oh, we got an item. What do we got? A broken sword. Yeah, that doesn't sound too good. Do you know of Queen Florn of Zenobia? No, I heard that she died in the war 25 years ago, but apparently that wasn't so. Everyone now says that the queen is being held by General Previa in Fort Shulamana. That broken sword, uh, it is a black magic weapon and it only gives plus four strength. So, bad element, bad strength boost. There's our uh, Sylph coming in handy there, going first, doing some good damage. Which is good because our vampire ain't gonna do too much damage. And that's sad that uh, she didn't avoid any of those attacks. Usually her. Uh, Agility keeps her safe, but yeah, uh, the blood suck is a black magic attack, and uh, those Raven men have decent uh, resistance to black magic. So, what do we got coming up here. Ooh, uh, sh uh, what is that? Is that a nope? It's a monk. Monk with two red dragons. So the monk will be able to heal everybody in that in that uh, battle. And I'll have home field advantage on the mountains. So it'll be a tough unit to fight. Emperor card can help swing the thing, gives everybody an extra turn in battle. Oh, got too many cards. Maybe I have to start using a few of them. The Empire's main legions are made up of mainly samurai and knights. They're sure to become a formidable enemy. Alright, well. Oh, looks like some uh, unit is sneaking past, uh, going down a little lower there. I guess it went off course when we uh, defeated it, retreated to the south a little bit. They're going to try to flank us and uh, come over to where Orpheus is. So we'll send our ninja unit back. We still have a good line of defense there. That one unit will be healing in the temple. Send the other unit back. And those two units, Luke and uh, the water, will be able to help... Uh, Hold off the other side there. That uh, unit over there is uh, very uh, not very stacked. It only has uh, a devil and a zombie dragon in it. So I can see a devil to hit all attack. So this could be a tough battle because we're uh, all good u aligned units in this uh, in this. Uh, uh, unit. Oh, but that's good. We have the octopus with the the kraken with the uh, white magic. So yeah, see, he did a decent amount of damage. So we're fighting at night, and uh, I guess the only thing helping us is, like I said, the kraken has a white magic weapon, and uh, we're fighting in the water, his home turf. You know, Samurai master is doing basically nothing. So that's because the. Zombie dragon there has such good resistances to everything but the white. So even without taking out that zombie dragon, we uh, we didn't win. But of course, we did take out a lot. A lot of the hit points that we did take away were from tarot cards. Remember, tarot card damage is not calculated uh, when they do the damage equation. So let's hope we can go before the devil does and finish him off. Woohoo! He'll drop that big meteor on our head. The meteor, if you go back to the episode where I fought Galf, uh, you see it looks kind of like a toy. It looks almost like a dog, like squeaky toy. It doesn't look like a uh, like a big hard rock. 
It has like these little uh, exaggerated looking craters on it. Like I was saying, there was Samurai and Knights. Looks like we have a Samurai Knight unit coming up there. Luke's about to fight them, so let's see how this composition is. We got, uh, nope, two Samurais in the front row and three Samurai Masters. At least that third Samurai Master ain't in the back row. One less, uh, Ananuki attack to avoid. Yeah, since we were almost running out of tarot card space, we had to throw one out earlier. Let's use up another one. Yeah. Well, this, this is really, really helpful. They're, uh, targeting our, uh, undead. So this is a good fight for uh, this unit to be in. Because the biggest threat that the Samurai Masters on a Nuki attack there, they're just going to go after our uh, undead. Won't be able to deal any damage to him. But now we have to do damage. Our Rock Golem is doing very, very poorly, even though we're on home turf. Come on, Rock Golem, what's going on? I mean, Samurais, I guess. So now we see that um, monk unit coming up. We want to definitely retreat uh, because uh, while that undead unit is good for fighting that samurai unit, not going to be good against that uh, monk unit because uh, her healing magic take care of that uh, undead. We don't want to have any, uh, you know, defeats. Also, can you really kill a ghost or a skeleton? Yes, you can. It's weird putting the uh, having the weak enemy be the uh, the red dragon, but our uh, where uh, which we call it our werewolf took care of that. So I think we should be able to finish this one off. Just for safety, we'll use up another one of our tarot cards. I'm not sure if the red dragon will go before our monk, and of course. Uh, he did not, so we didn't need to use that card, but if we didn't use that card, then the way things work, uh, the Red Dragon went before our monk and uh, killed our uh, cherubim there. So when it's a, I've noticed that when it's a 50-50 shot of something happening, uh, it's a 100% uh, chance that I will guess wrong. So, but hey, better safe than sorry. So, wow, she still has a which we'll call it uh, three levels to go just to get to level 22 but she's pulled really far over to the side so it'd be nice if she got into a fight with one of those uh, 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 phantom units definitely get her a level up there All right, well the uh, Mo, uh, the Nixie the Mo person there uh, her ice should deal some good damage to the red dragons. So, whoop. You just gotta keep hammering away. I think that's her second heal. I wasn't paying too, too much attention. It's always good when their monk goes first before we deal a lot of damage. And it looks like our samurai, yep, is equipped with an ice weapon. So he'll do some extra uh, damage. You can tell because it's flashing uh, blue when he hits. Red dragons, being fire elemental, have a weakness to the ice. So we kind of switched out where uh, Luke and uh, Molina's, you know, I think that was her name, uh, were her unit was up there top earlier, and the doll mage unit was down, uh, Luke was down a little south. Now they switched because of just this uh, monk. So each of those uh, Samurai Masters hits is pretty much count, uh, gonna negate any of the healing that the uh, Monk does, so... Slowly but surely, as long as he doesn't miss any hits, we'll slowly dwindle that uh, Red Dragon down. Because she only has two full heals, uh, he has three uh, attacks. Kraken has four attacks, but not doing as much damage per hit, because... Uh, he has the white magic, and they have a better resistance to white than uh, ice. Now that's a high-flying unit, and we're unfortunately on the water. 
We should be able to catch him. Hey, we liberated another city. If not, I guess we can always have Orpheus get into the fray. An Empress card. Good healing card. Especially now at the end of the game, so... General Previa, one of the four Vedas, is in the Fort Shalomano on the tip of the peninsula. Yes, we've heard. We also heard that apparently the Queen is in there. The Queen, that would have been um, Prince Tristan's mother. Surprisingly, there, you do not have to bring Prince Tristan into this map. Uh, you need him to get the special item, but he does not have to be the unit that defeats uh, General Pavea. There's no special dialogue. Uh, and also, uh, you'd think that maybe uh, Debonair might have special dialogue with another one of his fellow uh, Devas uh, there, but he does not with either of the Devas, with either uh, Pavea here or Luvalon uh, at the end of the other route. So... You only need Prince Tristan to get uh, the mystic armband at the end of this. Uh, he basically finds it uh, on his mother. But, yeah, spoiler. Uh, she survived the war 25 years ago, but unfortunately she does not survive these events here. We arrive a little too late. But, this gives uh, Prince Tristan even more... Uh, fuel to his uh, quest for justice. Well, looks like we're going to have to get Orpheus in on the fray. That unit snuck by us, but Orpheus though, like I said, even though he's really not built for combat, um, the stats that he has are inflated because of all the tarot cards that he's been picking up. And that includes also his uh, little griffin friend who gives him all those frequent flyer miles. And the Griffin has a really good weapon, the Brunhild Sword. Best uh, white uh, magic sword in the game, plus 20 strength. So he does a lot of damage. Uh, and uh, Orpheus with his uh, high intelligence because of all the tarot cards uh, does a lot of damage with his uh, hit all ice cloud attack. Even if the enemy is not uh, necessarily weak to ice. But I think the uh, the Griffin is going to be the big uh, hero in this battle if they fight, because uh, all these devils uh, or demons, uh, devils are their last promotion. They're red, so they're uh, they're still demons. Uh, have uh, low uh, resistance to white magic, so white attacks with the uh, Griffin there will deal uh, significant damage probably take out that other one there on the right there. Monk, yep. So look at that. Three attacks, taking out two enemies, and pretty much uh, knock that one down to critical range. And it's unfortunate he wasn't a little bit to the south. He could have been maybe pushed back toward our Beastmaster uh, unit, but... it's a neat, interesting unit. Yeah, that uh, Silpha's going to tear them up. And then the Ninja Master is going to tear us up, so... Uh -huh. See how much, uh... If we can cut through any of these, uh, front lines. Let's see what they... Who the best targets. Ah! Took out that one on the... Uh-uh. So that... Hmm, I'm surprised they didn't, uh... They didn't keep concentrating their fire on that one on the left. To take him out. He wasn't doing much damage, but still... Every little bit counts. Helps us in the next battle, because there will be two less attacks if you would have took him out. And then it will allow us to, you know, further concentrate our uh, firepower on the remaining ones alive, so... Let's see what the Sylph can do here. Ooh, took out two characters. Now we just gotta... I'm a little scared if they, uh... Well, that, uh... uh master may, uh, eliminate himself here with his Inanuki attack. Let's see. Oh, he missed. Lucky, lucky guy. We just have to hope that we finish these guys off, so, alright. We have two chances to hit him, and we did. Nice! This unit can use a break. They're taking quite a bit of damage. But, we're close to the temple. 
And if that unit, that ninja movement, keeps going to the east, we have a unit set over there, the one with the cherubim, to take care of it. And so yeah, we can probably have that one retreat back to the temple for some healing. Orpheus can go back and get some healing. Not Orpheus himself, but his good buddy little Griffin there. I'm gonna have to learn his name. He's like the MVP of this little playthrough. He's he's been with uh, Orpheus basically almost the entire game. I think at the beginning we had we were using a uh, Canopus just to carry him around his low sky. But once we got a Griffin uh, that had decent alignment, we threw him right in there to take care of it. Ooh, we got that uh, uh, zombie dragon again. Uh, undead the zombie dragon unit again. It'd be nice if we were able to push forward with Luke's unit there, but that shaman, that monk unit there. Keep calling, getting it mixed up. That monkey right there is a big problem. It's the only one that uh, it could theoretically win against. So, because that monk will never be able to do any damage, but it could defeat our uh, wraith there. So, well, the good thing was that when we retreated, we pushed ourselves back across the water. So, uh, keep her. Uh, keep Luke's unit out of harm's way there and put him in a better position to uh, target that uh, um, zombie dragon unit coming up. Let's hope that uh, zombie dragon targets the weak character and goes after our undead. We still have to worry though about the the devil there dropping a big uh, rock on us though. Ouch. It's almost, what, uh, 200 damage. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna do 200 damage for the uh, thing. We do about four, yeah, Golem doesn't have a good weapon equipped. Like I said, if he, if the, uh, Doll Master hits both people, it's only 40, so there's no way. Mm -hmm. This is where you need that. White magic weapon, so... But even though they're doing more damage to us and they're pretty much gonna win, it's just like a battle of, uh, you know, attrition. It's like a uh, battle of like a thousand cuts. We just have to keep cutting down because they have no way to heal. So any damage that we uh, deal to them is just, you know, gonna add up over time. All the damage they do to us is uh, going to be healed by our monk. So even though they'll do a lot of damage right off the bat there, They'll, uh, it'll be healed up by the end of the battle. Because that, uh, the zombie dragon looks like it's targeting our undead. So that, uh, Halloween would be good against that unit. Because the, uh, that, uh, 50% damage that, uh, the Halloween's, uh, pumpkin does, it doesn't matter what the character's resistance is, it's always going to be that flat, uh, 50%, so... Doesn't care that you have good resistance, uh, zombie dragon. You know, cut you in half and cut you in half and keep doing it over and over. So yeah, you see, we're pretty much back to full health. And they're a little bit lower. Got to the point, actually, where the golem now is hitting the, the, the devil. We actually won. Wow, that's surprising. Now this unit will do much better, because remember we have the uh, octopus with the uh, white magic weapon. We're kind of in shallow water instead of deep water, but... Alright. Oh. Weak, deal some extra damage to the uh, undead zombie dragon up there. The undead dragon. Might actually finish it off. So let's see here. Yeah, finish it off. Yeah, you just see the difference that uh, you know, fight uh, attacking the correct resistances do. Yeah, we did a bunch of damage, but we lost. But that's nah, okay. The only problem is now that uh, that that dragon is taken care of, that uh, devil now will be low flying sky, so it will move pretty quick. So we gotta hope that Luke's can push back a little further enough to cut it off before it gets close to the. Uh, our base, because you know that's where he's actually going to be going. So, this unit uh, 
Obviously, we fought it before, but haven't fought it in a while. But we should finish it off this time. Dealing with some good damage to us, but once that other ninja master goes, we'll, uh, it'll be, uh, we don't have to worry about anything. We can put it back on weak techniques and finish it off, but I don't think we'll even need to do that. Yep, one more hit. Dunk. And our cherubim got an extra level. Nice. So only two more to go before it promotes into a, a, a seraphim. And then she'll get a hit all white magic attack similar to the uh, sylph's uh, missile attack. So her alignment and charisma look good there. And uh, Orpheus' army looking pretty good here. So come back in our next episode where we continue our assault on uh, the Sh Shalamano garrison. Take care. Thanks for your time. Bye.